Welcome back everybody. Lord Duckman here from Lord Duckman's driveway. I'm headed out to go look at a car. And normally I don't get to release these videos because if there's no deal or the car is not particularly interesting, I don't even bother to put up the video. But this is another one of those intros that I'm hoping I get to release. And if you're seeing it, well, then that means I acquired the car. But I'm going to look at a 1971 Squareback as a potential candidate to put on my 1967 Volkswagen bus frame. That's right, we're gonna build a lifted Squareback. And with that said, if this car is exactly what I'm looking for, and I'm looking for something that's got rust, that needs help, that's not completely falling apart, but that, you know, that wouldn't be a horrible, ooh, just drifted by accident, like really, really huge drift. <laughs> it's a little wet out here. Duckman, you shouldn't be using the camera while you're driving. Well, guess what? I still managed to shift the manual transmission and drift my damn car while holding a camera all at the same time without being a danger. I never even left my lane. How about that? Well, hopefully this car will uh, be exactly what I'm looking for. As I said, I want something that needs repairs but doesn't need a, you know, a complete teardown restoration or chop-up restoration like, let's say, Eleanor, for example. But maybe something kind of a close candidate to that. You know, it does need work that I wouldn't feel guilty modifying in such a way to put it together to make it become what I want to see and what you guys want to see which once again is a very highly lifted Volkswagen done in a way that you don't normally get to see them done on a truck chassis which is essentially a bus chassis as well I digress I'm doing a lot of this I need to be doing some more driving and focusing on the road it's a little wet out here it's raining not hard but it's raining and well I'll give you an update once we got one as soon as I go visit this car so let's see what happens we have here is a 1971 square back it's got a lot of rust needs a lot of repairs nothing that the duck man can't fix not totally not the end of the world by any means at all because of this rust here this stuff can be modified in such a way and you guys will see I got plans for that doors are sticky to say the least kind of rusty open a little heavy but the pillars are intact at the bottom. And the heater channels look pretty good on the top side. Of course, they are covered with that metal. There's usually holes underneath that. And there may be some holes underneath the carpet, but I didn't tear that carpet out. But that's nothing that I can't fix if that is the case. Interior appears to all be there, but it does need some help. Yeah. All right, around the front. This is one of the ugliest things. The hood is uh, pretty severely rusted. In fact, it's so badly rusted that this is not something that I would try to restore. I mean, I, I could, I guess, if I had a new piece for donor, but I think Declan Don might have one around, so I'll talk to him about that. Um, down below, though, we're looking. And there's a little rust there in the spare tire well, which is removable, but around it appears to be pretty good. It needs a patch there, but not too awful. The uh, latch here did get ripped out of it because apparently it was in a service shop and somebody tried to open the hood to get to the engine and destroyed it in the process. But again, well, that's gonna get repaired. All right, this was a California car and it was driven here from California, not but a few years ago. This was actually in our car show back in 2018. There it is, 78, 78, bleh, 71 square. This door is even stickier than the other one. Yeah. But again, the bottom of the pillar is intact. Well, that's good news there. But rusting around the doors here. Floors are pretty rough. Not into the world rough, but rough. This stuff needs to be fixed up in here. This is, this is some of the hardest stuff to fix because there's all these contours and shapes. Not, again, that it can't be done. I can do it. I'm the duck man. But we're also looking at uh, rust in the roof where the heat, the heat, <laughs> where the roof rack was, and you know that's drained into the car, so that's not doing anything good for the interior nor the floors. In the back here, we have, as you might expect, the Type 3 engine. 
just like my square back, or fast back, I should say. Ruby has exactly the same setup, or had. This still has its fuel injection on it. You see it right there. This engine does run. Battery will need to be charged, jumped, whatever. Um, again, I believe that it does run because this thing has been driven from California to here and it's been serviced recently, so I'm pretty confident. Also has a hitch on it. That's a nice feature. Well, this is what we're looking at. 1971 square back. Also known as Lemon Drop. And I think Lemon's keeping her name. <laughs> All right. And there's Miss Lemon. That's my radar detector. <laughs> and she's coming home tomorrow. And that'll probably be the next video when she comes home. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. But uh, yep, I just acquired a 1971 square back. Well, we're getting out of here just in time for it to start raining. Imagine that, raining? Pensacola? What are the chances? <laughs> this is a beautiful neighborhood too. Really beautiful neighborhood. A little too uh, high priced for me though, but uh, and probably there's an HOA in here. I can almost guarantee that. That's probably why it's so beautiful. All right, well, we're gonna wrap up this video. Here she is. She made it. How's it going? <laughs> done here. We cock the wheel a little bit to the other side. Fantastic. There we go. And I'll put some more wood under there. <laughs> there he goes. Lemon Drop, aka Lemon, or The Lemon, or Lima, or Limon, or something. <laughs> yep. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. All right, well, she's home and she's safe. I decided to go around the car and start knocking out hornet nests because when I sat down on the driver's seat, there was a hornet nest effect. There's one of the little guys right now, yes. Um, they started coming out of there, and when I put my finger in there to try to knock the nest out, it turned out it was a lot bigger than I thought, and those hornets came out everywhere. So I got everything open right now, and I'm going around the car and just kind of uh, banging on things, trying to see if the hornets are going to come out of anywhere else. Yeah, I got a lot of work cut out for me, guys. This is going to require a lot of cutting into, that's for sure. There's the engine. There's the uh, telltale pry marks of somebody trying to turn the, um, the fan with a screwdriver. You're not supposed to do that. Well, somebody was in there doing something, one of the mechanics in the past. There's the fuel injection computer. Not mounted, just kind of dangling. <laughs> got some severe rust back in here. This is all going to need to be cut away. In fact, this whole, yeah, this whole area in here is pretty bad. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? Gotta deal with that stuff to fix all that, so all that's gotta be cut away. What is this? Oh, just a piece of tin. Nothing on that side. Turn around over here, trying to shake things out. 
Um, there was a hornet's nest also under the fuel flap. No, I knocked that out. It's on the ground here somewhere. In fact, there's some of it. In the door over here, though, I didn't see any. That was good. But those are the kind of areas they like to go. They like to go up under the wheel wells. They like going to the gills. They like going around the doors, up under the bumpers. So I'm just going around the car, beating on things, seeing if any of these hornets shake out. Well, anyway, that's where we're at. But we're about to wrap up this video. A big question that everybody wants to know, and I want to know too, is does she run? And the answer is, I don't know. I have not seen this car run. I made a deal on it, on running. But, a little piece of history about this car. Back in 2018, this car was driven here from California. So, that's 3,000 miles it made its distance. And it won an award in our car show for it. Longest distance traveled. The only car that showed up from California that was in our show. She also won a third place for uh, Type 3s. I was in that show that year, I think it was the second year for Eleanor, when Eleanor didn't have any paint. So she run um, Best of In Progress class. And Tommy was behind that, and uh, Carlos was right behind that with a third place. I think he also got President's Choice Award. But anyway, that's nothing to do with this car. This is my 1971 Squareback. Previously named Lemon Drop. I need to come up with a good name. I wanted to call her Lemon. Previous owner disagrees. Yeah, I know. You don't have to listen to previous owner because now it's my car. But uh, I kind of like Lemon. You know, I kind of like the yellow, too. I think I might wind up keeping it yellow when I get done putting this thing back together. Probably not the same yellow because this has had some, some time to fade. It used to have a more rich color like you see here. But eh, we'll see. Battery's charging. And I'm gonna fight with this thing. And by the end of the day, hopefully I have the next video cut that you guys are gonna see this in a series. And if you get lucky, maybe I'll even have two videos up this week of this car. Now, there we go. There is my 1971 Fastback. Oh, Squareback. Yeah, my 1971 Squareback. Getting used to saying that. I'm used to saying Fastback. <laughs> There's Ruby. <laughs> yep. There we are.